What would happen if you cut out alcohol for 30 days? In just 30 days, you can see really dramatic changes. People think it has to be this grandiose change for an entire lifetime, but one step at a time. Start with a week, start with 30 days, and I'm gonna share what can physically change in your body in just 30 days and what you will feel in that 30 day period. Let's jump right in. The first thing that you'll notice is going to be less of the visceral fat, less of that pot belly. That can actually go away pretty darn quick. And there's some interesting research. There's a study published in the journal Nutrition that demonstrated that those that drank more alcohol per week had higher levels of visceral fat compared to those that drank maybe only one time per week or one drink a night. It was that dramatic. You can still drink a little bit over the long term and be okay with this, but if you were to reduce it or get rid of it entirely for 30 days, you would almost certainly see a reduction in visceral fat. Now, the reason that alcohol contributes to visceral fat is because what happens is your body has to prioritize the metabolism of this toxin, alcohol which means the liver has to focus on dealing with the alcohol and does not get a chance to deal with the other things. So what happens is your triglycerides rise, and this leads to more triglycerides building up in the liver. And this means more fat building up in the liver. And this also means more fat surrounding the organs underneath the normal fat tissue of your belly. Now, when you reduce alcohol, this can go away pretty quick too. So inside of 30 days, you'll notice that. You'll visibly notice a change in your belly more than likely. Now, since visceral fat is inflammatory, it leaks inflammatory cytokines, it is metabolically active, you'll also notice less inflammation, which means you'll probably notice less joint pain, maybe notice less back pain. You'll definitely notice that you're mentally clearer, and most importantly, you'll have more energy. Okay, you'll feel less fatigued because you're not gonna have to deal with this immune response of inflammation circulating throughout your body quite as much as it was before. The next thing that you're gonna notice is less inflammation, not just overall, but directly in your actual gut, like bloating and irritable bowel syndrome, things like that. Sometimes people drink so much that they just don't realize, it's become their new norm that they're bloated and uncomfortable. Well, there was an interesting paper that took a look at people that drank a lot versus not non-drinkers, but just not alcoholics. And they found that those that were alcoholics or that drank a lot had severe gut dysbiosis, which means their microbiome was just really whacked out. And they also saw that there was a dramatically low level of a specific strain called Bacteroidetes. Bacteroidetes is a bacteria that is largely associated with being lean and healthy. And when Bacteroidetes is low, well, that's the opposite of lean and healthy. Not to mention there was very low connectivity. Low connectivity means less of an ability for your microbiome to adapt to different environments and different sort of like food environments. So basically it becomes very rigid. What does this mean for you when you cut out alcohol? Well, when you cut out alcohol, you can start to regain some of that gut diversity, which means a number of things. Less bloating, which can be very significant and very fast inside of even like three, five, six days. Okay? Less irritable bowel syndrome, so less like bathroom issues and irregularity. Better, healthier poops in the morning, right? Less of what is called a leaky gut. Okay, when you have a leaky gut, it's because the epithelial cells within your gut can become damaged by the alcohol itself. It actually damages the little cells that are lining our gut, which means that the safe place where all the pathogenic material and bacteria are in our gut is no longer like contained there. It can leak into the bloodstream, causing an immune response, causing inflammation. So what do you feel because of that? Well, with that, you'll feel, again, less of the joint pain, you'll feel mentally clearer, and you'll have more energy. But again, all of this works together. You also wanna focus on diversity. I do recommend if you're cutting out alcohol, I popped a link down below for Seed, which is a probiotic that I recommend. It's called a Symbiotic because it has specific fibers. It has a prebiotic fiber and probiotics in it. So it's a capsule inside of a capsule. It's very cool technology. And it's just something that might help out your microbiome as you're trying to make a lifestyle change. So I went ahead, I popped that link down below. If you use that code THOMAS15, that saves you 15% off so you can give it a try. It's one of those things that you really do notice within a day or two. It changes things fast because they really have some cool technology to maximize the amount 
of microbiome change that can occur. So highly recommend it. That link down below, just below this video, the first line of the description. Now, one of the things you might notice very quickly is that you'll eat less. And you might notice this within days, but this is gonna make you feel a lot better too. And you'll also notice that you have better impulse control. There was a very interesting study that pointed this out. It was published in the journal Physiology and Behavior, and it had subjects eat a standard breakfast, lunch, and dinner, except 30 minutes prior to lunch, they gave subjects either a placebo non-alcoholic lager, a lager with one unit of alcohol, or a lager with three units of alcohol, and no one knew what they were getting. The group that had the most alcohol ended up eating tremendously more with lunch when they had this 30 minutes before lunch. They also opted for fattier foods and for saltier foods because they were really trying to satisfy their brain more. So yes, there's things happening at a brain level, but there's also things happening at sort of a system metabolic level too. You see, again, because the liver has to prioritize the metabolism of the alcohol, when the food comes in, it disrupts satiety signals and it disrupts some of the like energetic sensing. Because now you have more triglycerides that are elevated because the liver hasn't had a chance to deal with them. And I know this is complicated stuff, but the bottom line is that your liver has to prioritize the alcohol. It's a poison, which means that satiety signals are just totally thrown off and you end up just wanting to eat more and more and more because the brain doesn't know how to regulate what's happening. So how does this make you feel outside of, of course, losing weight and probably having more energy? Well, your brain's gonna feel better. When you're not constantly bombarding your body with food, your brain is gonna feel clearer. And you can notice this within days. When you're not constantly wanting to eat, you're able to register a signal with the brain to be more clear. Remember, more energy in our brain comes as a survival system. If we're eating, the brain becomes sort of lackadaisical because when we're eating, the brain has seen, okay, we got what we needed, we can disarm a little bit. But if, not necessarily hungry, but if you're taking breaks between meals because you're not constantly eating or you're not constantly hungry and having a crazy appetite to eat everything, the brain can focus a little bit more. And another common thing that people don't think about is within a few days of cutting out alcohol, a lot of times your libido improves. And this has to do, again, with the hippocampus, the hypothalamus, this whole axis that has to do with what gives us a sex drive in the first place. The next thing is you're gonna notice immense, immense brain benefits, especially when it comes to executive function. What that means is you'll probably make better life decisions, and this can happen fast. So we all know that if we drink some alcohol, like the next day we don't mentally feel our best, right? You wouldn't go, completely drink a ton of alcohol before, like the day before something very important, right? Well, in order to understand what happens in 30 days, we have to take a look at what happens in 30 years. So there's a study published in BMJ that recruited 550 subjects and they were regular alcohol consumers, okay? And what it had them do is it, it really chronicled them over 30 years. So in a 30 year follow-up, they found the people that consumed the most alcohol had hippocampal atrophy. The hippocampus is the region of the brain that's responsible for memory, uh, somewhat of executive uh, function and things like that. But what they found is that the more alcohol, the more atrophy. They found people that had 30 or more units of alcohol per week, which sounds like a lot, but it's pretty attainable for a lot of people. That's you know three or four drinks a night adding up to that, had 5.8 times the amount of brain atrophy compared to non-drinkers. That means that their hippocampus shrunk 5.8 times faster than those that didn't drink. And even those that just had a couple of drinks a night, just two drinks per night, had three times the amount of hippocampal or brain atrophy compared to non-drinkers. So this happens fast. And the reason that I mention this is because clearly something is happening at a tissue level outside of just a metabolic system with the liver. So in 30 days, what you could probably expect is a clear thought better vocabulary, because they definitely see relationship with vocabulary and ability to articulate in people that are chronic drinkers. So you might notice that quicker. You also might be able to retain and be able to articulate what pops into your head faster. And this can happen probably a little bit later on, like 14, 21, 30 days in, is when you'll really start to notice more long-term brain energetic changes. Now the interesting piece is you'll probably be less anxious as well. And this has to do with neurotransmitters. It also has to do with just overall brain energetics. But what's interesting is people drink a lot of times to cope with anxiety. And it becomes a vicious circle. Eventually, you don't know which way is up. And I think a lot of us have been there before. But quickly, you start to notice that when the alcohol is cut out, the anxiety goes down. And then you stop this cycle. 
Now this is something that you might start to notice 14 or 21 days in. Yes, it might be immediate to a small degree, but you're gonna notice it more so towards the latter end of the 30 day period. Lastly, probably one of the biggest pieces before I get into some pragmatic tips to be able to help cut out alcohol, you're going to lose weight and you're going to have better insulin response. You're gonna probably be less insulin resistant. And let me explain why. There was a study that was published in Alcohol and Alcoholism. Okay, and it found that in those that drank a lot more alcohol, there was a significantly higher amount of hepatic triglycerides. That is liver fat. Okay, 43% more hepatic triglycerides, liver fat, in the highest quartile of like those that drank the most compared to those that drank the least. That's significant. And what does this mean to you though? Well, as the liver builds up fat, not only does it get worse at its job, not only does it make you visibly more fat, not only does it add to visceral fat, but it renders the liver a little more useless with every bit that it gets more fat and with every bit that scar tissue forms. It just, it's a slippery slope. And this affects insulin resistance. This affects your ability to deal with glucose, which affects your metabolic health overall, which keeps glucose levels high which makes you hungry all the time, which causes other problems, which causes metabolic dysfunction, mitochondrial dysfunction, early like premature aging, all kinds of problems. So what do you notice in the short term though? With this, much more energy. And liver fat can decrease very, very, very quickly. That's the good thing. People think, oh, I've got a fatty liver. No, this can decrease fast. Once you start decreasing alcohol and your body has a chance to oxidize that fat, if you couple this with good exercise and you couple this with good eating habits and you couple this with lowering the refined starches and lowering the calories and lowering the saturated fat a little bit and increasing the olive oils, increasing the avocado oils, this can make a profound, profound difference on your liver health and ultimately your waistline, your insulin resistance, your mental health, and your overall long-term just longevity and metabolic health. Not to mention you'll lose weight and you'll have more energy. A couple of quick tips before I let you go with this. It's always easier, as far as the brain is concerned, to switch out a habit with something else. There's nothing wrong with that. You do not have to go cold turkey. If you like alcohol and you have an alcoholic beverage, swap it out for something else. Something else that tastes good. Even if it has some sugar in it, I would rather you jump out of the alcoholic pot and into the sugar kettle for a short amount of time. I think it's better than trying to go cold turkey and rebounding. But I do think there's better options than sugar, right? I think that you could find another treat or another drink that you like to consume. There's no sponsorship here for this whatsoever, but there is a drink called hop water that is made from hops, tastes kind of like beer, but it has like uh, no alcohol in it, but you still get a little bit of a buzz because they add nootropics to it. There's a lot of just different beverages like that. The other thing I want you to do is do some form of cardio three or four days per week in the morning. That's going to help stimulate the liver to oxidize more fat, clear out that fatty liver, and allow you to be able to get more of the metabolic effect of the changes that you're making. Another thing that I recommend is whenever you're craving something like an alcoholic beverage, if you have something salty, it does tend to help. Okay. These NST neurons that are in our hindbrain are largely associated with like sugar cravings. So if you have a sugar craving, you can have some salt and it kind of helps curb the sugar craving. But it's not directly related with sugar itself. It's related with the hit that we get as far as dopamine is concerned. Salt might just help you with that. So a lot of times I consume electrolytes and that kind of gives me this fix so I don't feel like I need to go for something like that. So anyhow, a couple of quick tips along with what happens inside your body. I'll see you tomorrow.